the Ninja Mo, welcome back to CAR Entertainment. I'm your host, Dylan Hamilton, guys. And now we're going to be talking about more A21 biology today. And this time it's going to be a little bit about biological control, guys, and how we can control the biological species and habitat and stuff in the environment and ecosystems and communities and different etc. terms like that there. But without further ado, let's get straight on it and see how we can use some biological control. So, an introduction, essentially, right? There's maybe two definitions. The first one's going to be pest species. And a pest species is a species that will damage a valuable or, or commercial crop species, and this can cause economic damage. Biologic control involves deliberately introducing a predator species that targets this pest. Okay, so that is what biological control is. This benefits the environment as it reduces the need for chemical pesticides, but it also can use broad spectrum pesticides, and these don't work particularly well. These broad spectrum pesticides will kill beneficial organisms, including many natural enemies of the pest. And this is a bad thing because you need these beneficial organisms. A broad spectrum insecticide can be used, and this is whenever the pest can experience a pest resurgence, and therefore, whenever they're taken out, they then rise in numbers very, very quickly and rapidly due to the elimination of a natural predator. So a success story then, let's just give you an example of a success story. Now you may be given one in the exam you have to talk about why is it a success, how is it a success, etc. But here's just one as an example. Well in 1868 the cottony cushion scale involved insects that settled along leaf veins and then sucked the flown sap from the leaves. This feeding resulted in defoliation. Albert Kubler discovered that the ladybird beetle will feed on the scale and therefore raised five shipments of these beetles to California. 514 beetles were received and released, and by 1890, all the infestations have been eliminated. So that is a uh, clear example where these uh, ladybird beetles were brought in and they were released, and they were biologic, and they were, and they took out the insects that sucked the flow sap from these leaves, and that was very good. Uh, and obviously, these beetles as well were able to target um, pods of species as well. So it literally just did its job. But now we're going to talk about biologic control real bad. There's these things called cane toads, you've already heard of them, and these uh, target grey back cane beetles. And, the, and these cane beetles destroyed sugar cane crops. Uh, the the grey back beetle would feed on top of the sugar cane stalk. And sugar cane stalks are massive, they're like six foot, okay? So they're massive, right? But as cane toads can't fly or climb, they're not going to be able to reach them. And the beetles out in day, but toads only feed at night. So when the Australian sugar cane fields were drier than the, na the native habitat and the toad needed wet conditions to survive, I mean, not only could they not fly, but they didn't feed at the right time, and it could didn't have the right conditions that it needed, then it wasn't able to work, and it couldn't take these grey back beetles out, and therefore it was ineffective. But cane toads are also poisonous, and therefore few predators could have the resistance to the cane toad's venom, and therefore these would die whenever the cane toad would take the try to eat them. Therefore the cane toad could be uh, a predator of many other species. And so because the cane toad couldn't get up to the greyback beetles on the sugar cane stalk, they would have to feed another animal. And therefore it took these animals out. And this was not very good uh, field. But there are advantages of using biological control. Uh, the first one is that there's no chemical damage to the environment and it usually only targets the, spes the pest species. So if you've done it well, not the cane toads, it will only target the pest species and you'll have reduced collateral damage. The development of resistance by the pest will be unlikely as well as the pest resurgence. And if it's successful, then you'll need a d little additional action saving money. There's different features of an effective biological control, so for it to be, so far to get these advantages, you need to have these features uh, prevalent in your effective biological control. So research ensures that if, if you carry a lot of research and this will ensure a successful outcome. If you survive and reproduce, if the animal can survive and reproduce in a new environment and then, then there will be no diseases and then portable with the control agent. It can be effective if it's used when pest numbers have a sudden surge. Thanks for watching this video. I've been Don Hammond from CAR Entertainment and I will see you next time.